Uh, good morning. Y'all doing all right? Come on. Great day to be in church. Uh, sitting in my seat, I thought, oh, that'd be funny. And I said, no, don't say that. But then I said that. Um, uh, but no, great day to be in church. Hey, we uh, last Sunday was incredible. Uh, loved last Sunday. Just appreciated um, y'all just honoring uh, the pastors here, Angel and I, Josh, the Coleman's. It was just uh, really a, a great Sunday. And then Dr. Yarbrough killed it. Um, man, that was, did y'all appreciate him being with us? It was uh, fantastic. Uh, and that's like one of those Sundays, if you, uh, you know, you talk to someone that's battling with their mental health, hey, check out this message, YouTube, you can send it to them, Facebook, uh, what a great way to just, you know, kind of get somebody in the doors of the church without coming to church, uh, just to uh, equip and, and invest in others, so I, I really enjoyed the uh, I'm Not Okay series, and I really felt like it, um, it, it was a great way to close out that series and brought so much healing and restoration to our lives. Amen. Amen. Um, yeah, and we got some fall weather happening, right? We got LSU winning. We got fall weather. I just feel like everything's just working right now. You know, it's it's fantastic. Uh, and and uh, yeah, just excited about fall. And I just know that God has so much in store uh, for all of us. Amen. He has more in store for all of us. And uh, we're, we're beginning a, a new series of messages this morning called Generous. Um, and, you know, generosity is truly uh, that thing that just unlocks so much more uh, within us as individuals and as a church. Uh, when we're, we're generous, it just unlocks and it, and it reflects the heart of God in all of us. And, and we're called to that. We're called to be generous uh, with our time, with our energy, with our resources. Uh, you know, generosity is, is what God has called each and every one of us to. And, and it's all for others. It's all for his glory and it's all to make a difference and it's all to push the kingdom of God forward. Uh, it's through our generosity that, that we can experience heaven on earth and, uh, and the hope of Christ to others. Amen? Um, it, it's so important. It, it impacts others. Generosity does that. It Im impacts others all around us, and it has the power to change us. And, uh, and, and purpose happens through our generosity. That's how it happens. It happens through our generosity. Uh, Proverbs eleven twenty five 25 says, The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Uh, you know, generosity is a key principle that, that has changed Angel in my life. I mean, completely. Generosity has, has brought peace to our lives that surpasses understanding. It has brought peace to our home. It has brought peace to our marriage. And, and I'm so thankful that it's something that God taught me uh, when I was 20 years old. I gave my heart to Christ, and, um, and, and, he, and, and God helped me to understand how important it was to walk in generosity uh, you know, gave my heart to Jesus, and I just started to live that way, generous, generously. And it's not just generous with finances, like just giving my life away. Someone's hurting, I'm going to spend some time with you. Hey, I'm going to invite you in, just living generously. And, uh, you know, I wish this was one of those um, um, topics that I could be super excited to come up here and share about, and uh, about, the, you know, giving and generosity, but it is a, a difficult subject to talk about. But it shouldn't be, Right. It shouldn't be. It should be. Of course, yeah. Let's talk about it. Something you believe in. Let's do that. But I, I'm already sweating up here, you know. And, and, you know, and it's, it's only difficult because so many pastors and ministry leaders have gotten this so wrong. Like, come on, church, we're believing for a new jet. The old one has some miles on it. Amen. We need a new one. Or, or you know, money cometh. Money cometh. And it's it's funny. We we had a little bit of a financial challenge as a church just recently, and. I was just praying, spending time with God, like, and I was like, just praying. I was like, come on, Lord, money cometh. And I just, as you would, like, hanging out with a friend, or if you're me, laughing at your own jokes. I'm just like praying. I'm like, money cometh. <laughs> come on, God. But for real, money cometh. Um, but, you know, many have, um, uh, there's been many that have just misunderstood and misused uh, and taken advantage of uh, resources that have been trusted to them. Right? We've all seen that. We've all heard about it. Uh, you know, I know some of you might even be cringing right now. You're like, oh, man, did I pick the wrong Sunday to come to church? You know, you don't like this topic. You don't want to hear it. And you wish you would have slept in this morning. Uh, but this morning, I just ask you to lean in. Amen? Can we come in with an open heart, open mind, and just lean in this morning and let God speak to you what he wants to speak to you. And, uh, you know, and if you don't like it, come back next week, and we will not be talking about gener generosity in regards to money. We're going to be uh, talking about something that is also very important, and I need you all here next Sunday because it's kind of the why to
to the what. It's kind of, okay, we're talking about generosity this morning. Next Sunday, we're going to be talking all about vision, the heart of God, and, 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 and what generosity means and, and um, how, how it moves the kingdom of God forward. Uh, but, you know, if you call Purpose Church your home, you're like, yeah, this is my church. I need you here next Sunday. Amen? Uh, y'all going to be here? Okay, okay. So I'm going to hold y'all to it. But, you know, like many things in life, there's some untruths that we have to unlearn. Um, you know, some things we learned along the way that we have to, okay, I don't even know if that comes from the Bible. I'm going to have to unlearn that, and I'm going to have to learn the truth of God's Word. Okay, if that's an untruth, what does God really say about this? And so my prayer today is that God would speak something fresh to all of us, some truths to all of us, uh, all about generosity. You know, because the truth is when we give, uh, it gives hope to others. It accelerates the, the, the vision of God that he has for all of us. It, it moves the kingdom of God forward, and it, it helps someone else to receive the hope of Jesus. You know, our generosity gives hope to someone else who needs it, and, and you never know who walked into a room desperate uh, for hope. Amen? You never know who's with you that just has, is desperate for the hope. Every outreach we do is bringing the hope of Jesus to others. And so the title of today's message is Giving Hope. Everybody say, giving hope. All right, let's pray, and we're going to pray that I can get through this. Amen? You know, that y'all don't fall asleep and, like, just zone out. Uh, but let's pray. Father, we love you so much, and thank you for this day. I thank you for your goodness, Lord. I thank you for um, your mercy on us, and I thank you uh, for faith, Lord. Father, I pray that you would speak through me this morning, and that you would speak something to each and every one of us, Lord. Father, I love it when you call me out, Lord. You recently called me out with something and challenged me with something. Call us all out, Lord. Speak something to us, Lord. Invest in us this morning and challenge us this morning and encourage us this morning because you're not finished with us. You have so much more for us, and I pray that you'd speak through me this morning. In Jesus' name, everybody say it. Amen. 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 Come on, i got to clap. I like that. Uh, come, one clap. That's like less than an 80s slow clap. That was just a one clap. That's a new thing. Uh, but giving hope, you know, giving hope, you know, every time we give, it gives hope to others. And, you know, as a church, we are so thankful for everything that has ever been given to this house. Uh, every person that has ever given. There are so many. I was thinking this morning about so many people that gave that have never walked in the doors of purpose and never will. Uh, there's this one specific couple, the Roses. They've both gone on to be with Jesus we wouldn't have survived for a couple of years if it wasn't for this family supplementing. And, and I've never met them, never will. Like I said, they've just, they both died last year or this year, I think. And, um, yeah, they'll never come. There's another lady that faithfully gives. She used to come to Purpose. She got busy, but she, she still invests in Purpose. I'm so thankful for the big and small gifts that have made Purpose Church exist. And, uh, you know, we just continue to have the privilege to give hope to others because of so many. Uh, I think about all of those that have given faithfully, sacrificially, and continually. And, and, and you know, we're, we're thankful for the big gifts and the small gifts. Amen? Uh, you know, it's because of your giving that we're able to bring hope to so many in so many different ways. Uh, you know, we've, we've been able to give hope to those that show up in this room and uh, those in our city that may never step into this room. You know, uh, and I love that we're that style church. You can you can come to church and you're going to experience Jesus. Or if you don't come to church, we're going to come to you and you're going to experience the hope of Jesus. Uh, just this week, I was able to spend a whole day just bringing the hope of Jesus to the men that are incarcerated at Hunt Correctional. Spent all day there and just loved it so much, bringing the hope of Jesus to places that could never even come here or for a period of time. Amen. Um, you know, giving financially, it's an important part of, um, of um, and, and it's life-giving for us, right? You know, giving, it's life-giving for all of us. I want to read this scripture to you, Proverbs eight seventeen. It says, I love those who love me, and those who seek me find me. With me are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. You know, the word of God, it, it teaches that our money, you know, in finances can be a place of peace, um, and, and blessing instead of being a place of anxiety and frustration. All the promises of the Bible uh, about finances, they hinge on obedience, you know, and, and wisdom. It talks about wisdom. Wisdom isn't difficult to find. You know, if we seek God's wisdom, we're going to find it, and we need God's wisdom in every area of our, area of our lives. Amen? Uh, but then the scripture also talks about prosperity. 
You know, one key, key word we see is prosperity. And it's one of those words that we, we hear that word and we get a little uncomfortable. Okay, okay, where are we going with that? You know, it, it describes something sometimes, or, or our experience with that word describes something that isn't even biblical. It, it's not even biblical. You know, it's been used next to this word gospel, the prosperity gospel. Have you all ever heard that before? Ooh, we're talking about the prosperity gospel. You know, it's this false idea. The prosperity gospel is this false idea that God is going to make everybody rich. Who isn't going to sign up for that, right? Like, yeah, I'm like, come on, let me get some of that. Um, you know, it's just, just that whole name it and claim it, that blab it and grab it, speak it into existence. You know, but prosperity is a biblical word. Like, prosperity is a Bible word. It's, it's from the word of God. And, and the word gospel and the word prosperity, they never have any negative connotation throughout the word of God. They're not negative things. You know, it, it, it's in the Bible, and it's connected to the things of God. And, and we have to exchange our definition pro, for prosperity for God's definition for prosperity. Uh, you know, we have to unlearn what we've been taught, uh, and we have to replace that for what the Word of God teaches. Amen? Uh, you know, prosperity, it describes our whole life moving forward. Like, prosperity means to prosper. Prosper is, is to push forward, like a nudge, uh, the hand of God moving us forward. Uh, prosper. It's, it's pushing forward. It's moving forward. But there, you know, in, in life, there are some places that you can go with your own power and your own effort. You can go to these by your own strength. There's some places that you can go, but then there's other places that you can only go with the nudge of God, with the hand of God on your lives. Uh, you know, we need the hand of God on our lives. And there are places that God wants to move us in our lives that we can only move into with him and with his help. Uh, we can only move forward with the hand of God pushing us and moving us forward. You know, how many of us want the prosperity of God? Like, I want that. You know, I, I want the hand of God moving me forward. We want the hand of God moving us forward into all that he created us for. You know, but prosperity, it does include our finances. Because in many times in the Bible, uh, it, it talks about it in regard to our finances. Uh, but it's not only tied to our finances and money. You know, God's heart is he wants us to prosper in every area of our lives. You know, there's verses like Proverbs 8, uh, 18 all throughout the Bible, you know, but God wants to bless you and he wants to move you forward. Uh, so if you have a, a false idea in your head that God, you know, I don't even know if God really wants to bless me. I don't know if I believe in all that blessing stuff. There's a lot of people that the word blessing is like a trigger word for them. But let me tell you something. If you don't believe that God wants to bless you, we're going to have to remove a whole bunch of scripture from the word of God because it says otherwise. God does want to bless us in our lives. Uh, Proverbs 9.1 says this. Wisdom has built her house. And she has set up seven pillars, seven pillars. So this morning, I want to talk through seven pillars of financial wisdom that will help us and allow us to move, uh, allow God to move us forward into prosperity. Amen? Come on, prosperity. Y'all with me? That's not a bad word. That's a good word. Amen? I want some of that in my life. Uh, the first thing, first pillar is, is to honor the Lord. You know, we have to start here. We have to start at this place because God wants to be first place in all of our hearts. Uh, when we become a believer, when we get saved, when we become a Christian, when we say yes to Jesus, God wants to be first place in your life. In Matthew, Jesus says, hey, don't worry about all these other things. Seek first the kingdom of God, and then everything else will be added to you. You know, sometimes it's not about all the things we're doing. Sometimes it's about just rearranging the things we're doing and placing Jesus as our top priority. You know, it's about putting him first. You know, and there's something very important about first. Like everybody wants to be first. I want to be favorite. We want to be first. I want you to think, I don't want you to invite me last. I want you to invite me first. We all want to be first. I want to be in first place. I was bragging to uh, Keenan right before a service. I was talking about, you know, some of the cars I've had. And uh, there was this kind of embarrassing phase of my life where I had a PT Cruiser. We called it the PT Loser. It was my grandma's. And uh, it was a turbo. And I beat a friend of mine that had an Audi TT turbo. I came in first. Amen. It made the PT Loser cool that day. There's something special, something incredible about being first. Proverbs 3, 9 says this, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of your crops. Then, I love a then in the Bible, then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. You know, a lot of times we skim over these verses. 
But God is teaching us and calling us to honor him with the first portion of our income. And the Bible teaches very clearly that we're all called to take the first portion of our income. Not the whole thing. You know, I love that God wants your whole heart. He wants every bit of your heart. But he just wants the first part of your income, right? Just to give that to the Lord. Keep, keep the rest, you know? You keep the change. Um, you know, it's part of our calling as Christians to trust God with our finances. And the Bible teaches that it's holy to the Lord. Now, is it okay if I teach y'all a little bit about this this morning? Like, y'all just stick with me. I want to teach y'all this morning. It's called the tithe. Have y'all heard of that? It's the tithe. Uh, tithe means 10 or 10th. And it's a calling for every Christian. You know, we're all called to be tithers and to honor uh, God with our tithe. It's a calling for all of us to honor the Lord with the first part. And I want to say again, as a church, we are so thankful for every gift, financial gift, big and small. But this morning, I want to teach what it means to tithe. I've noticed that tithing has become a generic term for any gift that is given to the church. Whatever some decide to give, oh, that's just my tithe. But a tithe is not that. The tithe means tenth, right? So tithing is giving the first 10% of my income to God through my local church. So the idea is, or, or the principle is, that when we get paid, we take the first 10% and give to the local church. It belongs to the Lord, but we give it through the local church that we're planted at, the church that we're committed to. Amen? You know, and God gives great promises to those who tithe. Come on, that word promise, sometimes we throw that around. Like, you promised. No, I just said... Yeah, maybe. Yeah, my kids like to turn a maybe into a promise. You promised we would go get ice cream. I said, maybe we would go get ice cream. Because a promise is solid, right? I want a promise from the creator of heaven and earth. I love a promise from God. Um, you know, and the biggest promise comes from, uh, and, and the teaching comes from Malachi. Malachi 3.10. It says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing uh, that there will not be room enough to store. Come on, that's a good thing. You know, in America, we got a lot of stuff. We, we put storage facilities in business because we have so much stuff, we have to store it and then get rid of it later. Like, so much stuff. He wants to give it to us. That there's not enough room to, over, to, to store it. And this is a win-win. Uh, it's a twofold promise that he gives us here. Uh, the, the tithe brings strength to the house of God. You know, we can keep, keep the lights on. We can provide the place. We can, you know, pro, go on, do outreaches and do all the things that we plan. So it gives strength to the house of God, stability to the house of God. And it also brings strength to your house. And it's important. It says the whole tithe, like all of it, the whole 10% into the house of God, not just a portion of it. And, you know, this morning I was actually tempted, an angel and I spoke and talked through this. Uh, I was tempted to offer some steps that would make this way easier. You know, like, um, you know, some steps. Like, okay, I see 10% is a lot, but why don't you start with two and then, and then go to five or occasional and then frequent. And, and, and you know, uh, that would 100% help the church and benefit the church financially to move forward um, you know, to, to stabilize, and, and it would be way easier to communicate. It would be more pleasing for you to hear, um, but I want to teach the Bible. Amen? Come on, people always say, like, I go to that church because they teach the Bible. I'm teaching the Bible this morning. Amen? Uh, and as your pastor, I want to be a part of instilling big faith into your hearts. Amen? I don't want to be guilty of just tickling ears. Amen? This isn't a tickle ear Sunday. That's weird. If I came, I tickled Austin Beamer's ear this morning. It was just calling my name. I just had to tickle it. Um, God wants this house, and, and uh, he wants this house to be strong. Amen? And he wants it to be strong to bless you and, and, and be strong to bless your family and be strong to bless your friend, uh, your friends and your coworkers and to bless this community. If you take your tithe, your 10% into the house of God, he will make sure that you don't miss out on any of the blessings that he has for your life. Amen? So if you're taking notes this morning, I want to give you three words um, here that, that'll, that I want to throw out about the tithe. The first one is thrive. 
I love the word thrive because it rhymes with tithe, you know, but, but the word thrive is, I love it. I, I say this word quite frequently when I'm praying for people. I just, man, I'll, I'll text, man, I just want to see you thrive. I love seeing you thrive. RPM guys, you know, when you're succeeding and, and graduate, I just want to continue to see you, to, I want to see you thrive in life. It just sounds so healthy. It sounds lush. It sounds stable, right? I love the word. You know, when we collectively bring our tithe together, it ensures that his house will thrive and the house of God will thrive and we want things to thrive. Amen. And then he also says, I'm going to make sure your house is thriving. He says, I'm going to open up the floodgates of heaven and the windows of heaven over your family, over your life, over your career, over your dreams, over your finances. And there will be great favor that will be poured out on your life. It's a dual word. His house thriving, your house thriving. Amen? Like, sign me up, baby. Uh, and then the second word is, is trust. You know, this is more of a trust issue than a money issue. Like, who are you trusting with your future? For our financial future, uh, do we trust the economy? Do we trust our jobs? Do we trust our retirement, Social Security, our 401K, our IRA, uh, the company we work for? Do we trust ourselves? Who are you trusting? Do you trust who's going to be elected next? You know, the reality is there's only one that we can trust. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? He doesn't change. Every time you bring your tithe into the storehouse... You say and you declare to the Lord that you trust God with everything. I trust you with everything. Uh, God, I trust you with my tomorrow. I trust you with my dreams. I trust you with the needs that I currently have. And I trust you to provide more than enough. It's a trust issue. Hey, I got some trust issues. Y'all got some trust issues? And if we shared our trust issues, you'd be like, yeah, I get it. I see why you have trust issues. You would understand my trust issues. You'd say, yeah, that makes sense. I wouldn't trust anybody either. Uh, but God has never let me down. God has never let me down. And he knows the imperfect world that we face. He knows what we face. And so he welcomes a test. He's like, test me. You know, you got some problems with this? Test me in this. It's a test. And this is also a twofold word. You know, we're, we're all tested every time we get paid. You know, are we going to honor the Lord? Are we going to trust him? Are we going to trust God to take care of our lives and then on the flip side, uh, every time we tithe, we're testing the Lord. Come on, that's, that's like a humility to, to test me. I know my dad one time, uh, he's, he's, got, he's been a home inspector for a very long time. And uh, one time this, this guy, well, he'd done his home, inspector, home inspection. He's done it since 89. The dude knows what he's doing. And um, he finishes it. And uh, this is probably like 10 years ago. So he was, what, 45? Um, <laughs> They laughed at that. They laughed at that. Um, um, but the guy's like, there's one more thing. I just want to see if you found it. My dad goes, I quit taking tests a long time ago. What did you see that you're concerned? And then he kicked the guy in the teeth. I've never seen anything like it. In my, not really. But he said, hey, man, I quit taking tests a long time ago. Kevin Dingle does not like being tested. You know what I mean? Uh, but God's like, unlike Kevin, he's like, test me. You know what I mean? I'm confident in my ability to bless you. I'm confident. I know that I'm going to impress you with the results. Test me in this. This is the only time in Scripture that the Lord says, test me. He said, this is the only area I'm saying test me in, but test me in this. And uh, you're testing your trust in him. So, so if you've tried everything else, you tried Dave Ramsey. You tried getting, cutting up the credit cards. You tried everything else. Get rich schemes. My mom's been in every MLM that has ever been created. <laughs> That's not a pyramid scheme. Yes, it is, Mom. If you tried everything else to have peace in your finances. Sorry, Mom and Dad. How risky is it? Test the Lord. You know, try it for 30, 60, 90 days. And if you don't seem, see some sort of impact, then just stop tithing. Amen? Just quit. All right, I tried. I gave, Pastor, I gave it 90 days. I gave it 60 days. I gave it 30 days. I didn't see anything, so I quit. I'll be like, okay, you test the Lord. That's up to him. It's, it's on him. That's not on me. If you don't see the hand of the Lord on your life, if you don't see blessings coming in your life, just stop doing it. But why don't you just try it? 
the creator of heaven and earth is offering a test. Take the test. Amen. And see what God can do in your life when you honor him by trusting him with your finances. Amen. Am I offending anybody this morning? Just Ricky. Okay. He raised his hand. He scratched his head at the wrong time. Now, after we begin to honor the Lord, the second pillar is vision. You know, vision is a picture of a preferable future. Uh, when we get a vision for what God has for our lives, uh, when we begin to honor him, he's going to open our eyes and we're going to see all that he can do in our lives and with our lives. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained, but happy are those who keep the law. Uh, some translation says, uh, where there's no vision, the people perish. You know, vision is the starting point for anything great. You know, come on, it starts with a great idea. It starts with vision. Anything great or, or, or significant started with a thought. It started with a vision. You know, what if you had vision mixed with faith of all the, way, the ways that God wants to move your life forward, nudge your life uh, forward, a uh, vision for what God can do in your life financially and beyond financially. You know, sometimes it's birthed out of pain. You know, or frustration that we get a thought, we get a vision, uh, you know, that we're like, I don't want my whole life to be struggling. I've had enough of the struggle bus. I want more than that for my life. You know, we can exchange some of this pain and struggle for a better way. You know, we can let God's plan um, be our way of life. You know, and, and you know, vision is a powerful, powerful thing. Amen. Uh, third pillar is this. Third pillar of uh, financial wisdom is work hard. You know, for some, it may not be a money problem. It's a laziness problem. You know, it's a lack of hard work problem. Come on. Uh, you know, God gives us relationships. He gives us opportunities and uh, the right connections for our jobs, uh, the right set of circumstances. He gives us ambition. He gives us motivation. He gives us healthy bodies. He gives us a work ethic. Um, he gives us a calling to go after. You know, uh, people to reach out our jobs. You know, so, you know, let's wake up early and, and, and work hard. Amen? Amen. You know, he's, the Bible says to do all things unto God. You know, if, if, if we wanna, want God's blessing on our jobs, I want to advance in my career. I want better opportunities. Show up when expected or even early. Be a problem solver. Be a blessing at work. Be a blessing to your employer. Amen? You know, work hard. Fourth pillar of wisdom does this help anybody this morning? That one probably hurt somebody's feelings. I'm sorry. Um, it's stewardship. Stewardship is one of those words you kind of only hear in the church. It's like Christianese for uh, management, right? Um, but it's an important concept. It means to take care of, care of something that isn't yours. Take care of something that doesn't belong to you. And, and as Christians, we're, there are two very important things about stewardship. One is none of this belongs to me. Come on, it doesn't belong to me anyway. Uh, one time, I, uh, this, this friend of mine that I went to high school with made some different decisions than I made, and he had a Lamborghini. And I was like, dude, can I borrow that Lamborghini? He said, yeah, sure. It doesn't belong to me anyway. He didn't loan it to me, but he said the right thing. You know, all we have belongs to God, and, and every good thing and perfect thing comes from above. You know, all we have belongs to God. I'm not an owner. I'm a manager. Amen? None of this is mine anyway. I'm stewarding. I'm managing what the Lord has given me. And the second thing, if it belongs to the Lord, we want to take care of it well. Amen? We want to do well with what he has given us and, and you know, what the Lord has given us. We want to take care of it, and we want to value it and respect it, and we want to take care of it. I'm an owner of nothing. I'm a manager of everything. You know, so this is the Lord's house. And we're all called to value it, uh, invest in it, care in it, and pray for it. Amen? The Lord will bless you with more if you manage what you've been given well. Amen? Come on. Is this truth? This is truth this morning. So let's honor the Lord with everything he's given us. And prosperity comes when we honor him with everything. Uh, one more, or two more, three more uh, pillars of wisdom. Number five is, is investment. Um, investment, you know, put a, open up a savings account, you know, uh, an investment account. I have the, like several fun like apps that I can just mess with when I'm trying to go to sleep, like uh, where I can just I'm gonna put a little bit in there. Mutual fund here, buy some stocks here, 
you know, uh, put a few dollars in each month and then increase it as you're able to. You know, open up an avenue where the Lord can bless you. It's kind of hard for God to bless you when all of your cash is under your mattress. Amen. Or if you're gangster in the freezer. Amen. <laughs> invest. Invest in the kingdom. Invest in, the, in, in people. Invest in serving. Invest in outreach. Invest. Invest in the community. Uh, invest in your future. Um, the sixth pillar of wisdom is generosity. Come on, let's look for people that we can just bless in our lives. Uh, Angel and I went out to eat uh, this week for lunch, and uh, we sat at this table. We went to J. Alexander's. We like splurge. Let's get, get us some, some expensive salads, right? I hate getting a salad at J. Alexander because I get a steak somewhere else for a salad at J. Alexander's anyway. Uh, but I wanted to lie to myself and think I was being healthy with fried chicken on my salad. Um, but we sat in almost the exact, I think it was the same booth that we sat in probably 20 years ago. We went out to eat at J. Alexander's, and we ordered way more than we should have. And it was expensive. We get the bill, and I was like, man, we really overdid it. And then they bring the bill, and uh, someone had paid for it. They, they came out there, and like, hey, a couple in here saw y'all. They just wanted to say, hey, they saw a young couple. I remember what they said. They said their daughter moved away, and they wish someone would bless her, uh, their, their daughter and her new husband like they blessed us. Generous, looking for someone that we can bless. Um, you know, biblical prosperity is, is, is when your surplus, your overflow of your finances isn't all about you, but about others. Our giving, it gives hope. Uh, it's for the kingdom to move forward to bless other people. You know, stingy and Christian should not be two words that are used together. Uh, you know, this label of stingy should not belong to Christians. Um, you know, but you know, Christians should be generous people. Amen? Generous. We're givers. Uh, you know, we give of our time. We give of our help. We give people encouragement. And we give and bless people financially. Uh, you know, lots of restaurants, and, and uh, they don't like serving on Sundays. They struggle to find waiters and waitresses to work on Sundays because Christians coming after church are not known to be good tippers, which is sad. You know, um, they should be excited. Oh, good, this is that church crowd. This is that church crowd. They'll be the break us off some. Um, you know, but, but that's not how it is. You know, they should be excited about our tips. Uh, oh, these are those purpose people coming. Uh, that's those purpose. Uh, that's their pastor with them. That brother can drink some water. I'm telling you, you will not be able to keep up with how much water they drink, but they are good tippers. Uh, you know, I want y'all. We, we have outreach cards on that table out there. I want y'all giving out outreach cards whenever you possibly can, but not with a stingy tip. Amen. <laughs> Our family has this new, well, it's an old tradition that we just relaunched. Um, before uh, COVID, we would go to Waffle House every Sunday for dinner. Uh, COVID kind of killed that. Uh, but then uh, we just started it back and we go to Waffle House almost every Sunday night. And it's the coolest crew ever. The cook, we call him, I call him the million dollar cook because he has literally cooked over a million dollars worth of food at Waffle House. He has a shirt that says million dollar club. So I walk in, I'm like, what up million dollar cook? The waitresses know us. Everybody know we, we know them. They know us. We even know the waitresses' kids. Uh, we tip well. We even give um, uh, their, the, the waitress's you know, daughters are there while she's working. So we'll bring her some do them some dollars for the jute box. And we just have fun being generous because I want them to come to church, right? We, we, we've been coming for a long time. We finally, hey, we want you to come to church. And they're like, oh, come on. I need to find a good church. And, um, you know, it's generosity. Proverbs eleven twenty four 24 says, give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy. And lose everything. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Come on, purpose. We're generous. Amen. We're a generous church. We're a generous people. We love to bless others. And the last pillar of financial wisdom is this. And this one's almost like a call back to last week. Emotional uh, health. Come on. Uh, emotional health. And this one's important because how we approach money emotionally is so important. Proverbs 15, 27 says this, the greedy bring ruin to their households, but the one who hates bribes will live. You know, money has this lure. It has this like attraction to it. It has this draw to it. And, and we think it's the answer to everything that we struggle with. Just throw some money at it. If I just had, I just want to throw money at my problems. Uh, if we think that that's the answer to all our problems, 
But money isn't meant to be our hope. It's not to, meant to be our hope. 1 Timothy 6.10 says, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. See, money is not the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. Money is not meant to be loved. It's not meant to be loved. Uh, money is a tool that God gives us to fulfill the vision for our lives and the dreams for our lives and the callings on our lives. You know, as Christians, God wants to bring money to us so it can flow through us to make a difference in the lives of others. You know, through our finances, uh, we can give hope to so many. But if we love it, it can't come through us. Come on, I love my wife. I love my wife. I cherish my wife. I do not share my wife. That's my wife. And I'll kill you. But I don't love money. Money can flow through me. I love my family. I love my boys so much. But money is not a love of my life. Is money your love? Or is God? No. Has money become our security or confidence or hope or what we trust in? Now, if any of that is true, it's not going to be possible to be generous uh, or, or to let money flow through you. Uh, you know, money finds you where you are. And if you don't have a plan for it or a healthy approach to it, it'll destroy you. That's why almost every time you hear someone wins the lottery, it ruins their life. There was no plan for it. It came to them. They had no plan for it, and it destroyed their lives. Some people eager for, for money have even wandered from the faith and pierced themselves. Like It's like you did it to yourself. Nobody did that to you. You pierced themselves with many griefs. Uh, people actually leave the Christian faith, leave their passion for Jesus, passion for the house of God, passion for others because the love of the love of and the drive for money is just so great. Pierce themselves with many griefs. You know, just reading that, it's, it's painful. You know, just to think of being pierced with many griefs. So let's approach money with a plan to honor the Lord with it. Amen? You know, we can break the curse of poverty. You know, break that mentality of always being deficient. It's always going to be this way. Let's break that and live an overflowing life, a life of breakthrough after breakthrough. Let's allow God to break the bondages on our lives you know, as, as a house. I mean, let's say as a church family that we honor the Lord. Amen? We honor the Lord. We have vision. We work hard. And we steward well. We invest. And we're generous. And we have a healthy view of money. We don't have an unhealthy view of money. We have a healthy view of money. And so for you this morning, I asked you, hey, open up your hearts, open up your minds. What is it that God is speaking to you this morning? You know, is there something holding you back from a generous life? It could be fear. It could be fear. There's so many people that grew up with lack that they're just so afraid that they end up hoarding. You know, they, I grew up poor and I never want to live that way. And so they end up living a hoarding life. You know, do one of these, uh, one or more of these pillars stand out to you? Like, man, that's, that's something that I need to do better. Maybe it's stewardship. Yeah, I, I let it flow through me to the credit card company all the time. Like, maybe there's something that stands out to you. Like, man, I, I got some work to do in this area. Now, let's be a church that gives hope and, and welcomes prosperity of God into our lives. Amen. Amen. Uh, John 1, 2, one last scripture. It says, beloved friend, I pray that you are prospering in every way and that you continually enjoy good health just as your soul is prospering. Let's prosper in every area of our lives. Amen. Let's seek God and, and pursue Jesus and believe for a whole life of prosperity in every area, an overflowing life. Amen. Let's all stand up. I want to pray for you this morning. Father God, we love you so much, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, for this day. 
I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your faithfulness. And Lord, I just want to thank you for the word of God that helps us, provides direction for our lives, correction for our lives, Lord, that, that you can help us, that you invest in us, that you teach us, Father, that you challenge us, Lord. And Father, I pray that we as a church would prosper in every single area, that we would thrive in our relationship with you, Jesus, that we would thrive in our uh, workplaces, that we would thrive in our careers, that we'd thrive in maybe our, our sobriety or our second chance in life. We would thrive in our marriages, Lord. God, I pray that prosperity would be evident in our lives and that the blessings that you bring to us we would trust you enough to let them flow through us, Lord, to bring hope to many, hope to our dark city, hope to others. God, we love you so much. And I thank you for this morning. I thank you for everyone in this room. And I pray that you continue to speak to us this week, this month, as we step out in faith and trust you with every area of our lives. God, we love you. And we praise you. And I pray prosperity and blessings on everyone in this room. Faith in everyone's heart in this room. God, we love you. And we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, maybe this morning you've never said yes to Jesus. You never trusted him with your heart. It's kind of hard to trust him with your resources when you haven't trusted him with your heart. I want to give you that opportunity this morning. If you've never said yes to Jesus or maybe you're like, I need a fresh start. I need a new beginning with him. I just want to lead you in prayer. Let's all pray this together. Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose again. You paid the price for my sin. Forgive me. Give me a fresh start. A new beginning. I trust you with my life. And I freely give my life to you. Lead me and guide me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, y'all give God a hand clap. Come on, we love y'all. Let's worship.